Chapter 3 Touchscreen GUI Layout The most challenging aspect of acquiring a new ventilator is teaching your staff how to operate it. Training can mean a considerable investment in time and money. It can also affect productivity and open a window for potential errors until the staff becomes proficient at operating the new device. As we said earlier, if you know how to operate the V60, you pretty much know how to operate the V680. Even if you've never seen the V60, the simplicity of the V680 design should help your staff get up to speed as soon as possible. The screen is laid out with a ventilator status bar at the top. Moving down the screen, we see the patient data window, the graphic monitoring window, and the settings window with tabs for ventilator settings, alarm settings, ventilator mode, a menu of additional features, and standby. The two indicators to the right of the tabs are for electrical power status and information. Touch the information key and yellow text appears throughout the screen with information about parameters and settings. The power status indicator will display the battery time remaining after one minute of operating on battery power. The green fill area will diminish as the battery is depleted. Now let's go back and examine each window in detail. The ventilator status bar includes the audio silence button, alarm reset button, alarm indicator bar, and ventilator configuration icons. Alarm messages appear in the alarm window which opens within the waveform window. The patient data monitoring window displays the real-time patient data, depending on the mode and circuit type. There are separate defaults for invasive or non-invasive ventilation, but this display can also be customized. Touch any of the nine display fields for two seconds to expand the full 23-parameter menu selection window. Note the field you touched is highlighted in blue. Within the expanded menu of parameters, Select the one you wish to place in this field. Active parameters for the current ventilation mode have a numerical display. Inactive parameters are dashed out. You can change multiple display fields once the full menu is open. Simply touch the next field you wish to change and touch the new parameter in the menu window. When you are finished, touch Close and you are back to displaying your selected nine parameters. Please note that even though a parameter is not currently selected to display on the main screen, V680 continues to monitor all 23 parameters. Another unique feature of V680 is the ability to measure dynamic plateau pressure and thus calculate compliance, elastance, and resistance values with accuracy similar to static values. These can aid the practitioner in ventilator management without the need to sedate the patient for an inspiratory hold maneuver. We will demonstrate the accuracy of these measurements in more detail when we get to the dual limb ventilation. In single limb ventilation, the elastance and resistance readings will be very useful in giving guidance for setting up proportional pressure ventilation, or PPV. We also see some useful weaning parameters like Rapid Shallow Breathing Index, RSBI, and TIT tote. Moving down the screen to the graphics window, we see the waveforms for pressure, flow, and volume. Touching the Loops button switches this section of the screen to the flow volume and pressure volume loops. You can toggle back and forth between waveforms and loops by simply touching the selection button on the lower left area of this screen. You can also pause, resume, and auto-scale the display at the touch of a button. During pause, the cursor appears for closer examination of minute sections of the breath. You can scroll with your finger or with the navigation ring. Digital values at each cursor position are displayed to the right of the graphs. Below the graphic display section, in the center of the screen, are the manual breath and 100% O2 buttons. Only one breath is given when the manual breath button is touched and then only after the minimum expiratory time of 300 milliseconds has elapsed. This is to help prevent breath stacking. When the 100% O2 button is touched, the prescribed O2 percentage is increased to 100% for two minutes. Also, whenever the 100% O2 feature is selected, the V680 will perform a single point O2 sensor calibration. This action also reveals two new buttons, plus two and cancel. Plus two gives an additional two minutes after the first two have elapsed to give a maximum total of four minutes at 100% O2. Once touched, this button becomes inactive. The remaining time at 100% is always displayed. Cancel returns V680 to the pre-configured O2 percentage setting. The settings window displays the current mode and settings which are accessible for changes at any time. The settings tabs also allow for easy access to the alarm settings, modes, menu, and standby screens. Touch the tab displaying the currently active mode and touch the IPAP button to change the inspiratory pressure level. 
You can change the setting by touching the forward and or backward arrows. You can also use the navigation ring at the top right of the GUI. Real-time setup guidance is provided as you make the proposed changes. Non-invasive single-limb ventilation works exactly like our traditional BiPAP ventilation. The pressure setting is absolute and not relative to the PEEP or EPAP level. Visual feedback in real time is provided as you increase or decrease the setting, calculating the pressure support level for you. In this case, we have 12 centimeters of water of IPAP set with a baseline EPAP of 4 centimeters of water. So, our pressure support delivered above baseline is 8. Not only is the pressure support feedback instantly updated as you change the setting, but a corresponding pictogram to the lower right of the pressure support display is updated as well. If you want to accept a new setting, simply touch Accept, or to return to the Settings screen without accepting the change, touch Cancel. V680 also comes with AutoTrack Plus. The AutoTrack algorithm, first introduced on the BiPAP Vision, automatically sets the patient's trigger and cycling thresholds, even with variable changes in the patient interface leak. AutoTrack lets you spend more time with patient care and less time fine-tuning the ventilator. The Plus function allows you to make small adjustments to the trigger and cycling for patients with extreme needs, such as small pediatric patients or severe COPD adult patients. It's important to mention that we have not made AutoTrack any less automatic. Without any adjustments, the default values will be sufficient to manage most patients. However, for the small percentage that may need it, AutoTrack Plus will permit the user to fine-tune the sensitivity and cycling settings. Touch the Modes button and all of the available modes are displayed. These are the exact same modes you find on V60, CPAP, ST, PCV, AVAPS Plus, and PPV. They are even arranged in the same order. To change to a new mode, simply touch the New Modes button. In looking at the overall screen, you will notice that whenever possible, settings that are common to more than one mode are placed in the same location. This may give the appearance of empty spaces on some mode screens, but this is all done by design for easy location of the settings. Touch each mode to see an example of this, then touch Cancel to return. Alarm settings are changed the same way as ventilation settings. Touch the Alarm Settings button. Each alarm parameter displays the current setting or settings. Alarm parameters that have a high and a low setting have those values represented above and below one another. Touch the Rate Alarm and select High Rate. Adjust the level in the same manner as you did for the ventilation settings. Visual feedback is provided by the flags above the settings controls, indicating the relative position of the low and high settings to one another. Next, touch the Low Rate button and adjust the setting. Note the message stating that the Low Rate Alarm is disabled until your adjustment exceeds the set respiratory rate. Touch Cancel. The Menu tab allows you to adjust screen brightness, alarm volume, access ventilator information, or lock the screen from access by unauthorized individuals. If you are practicing mask rotation to help prevent skin breakdown, you can easily change the leak value of the new mask from the menu screen. As mentioned, when you touch the Standby button, Standby mode is activated automatically when the patient is disconnected or manually when the Standby button is touched a second time. One word about RAMP and Standby mode. RAMP allows you to gradually introduce the ventilating pressure over a predetermined time. If an active RAMP is in progress when you enter Standby, it is automatically canceled and the user must re-establish a new ramp time, if needed. Now, let's demonstrate how V680 is truly two ventilators in one by changing it to a dual-limb invasive ventilator. You can do this by either touching Standby, disconnecting the patient, and touching the Configuration Screen button, or by touching the Power button and then confirming you want to power down the unit. You would then start from the beginning. For this demonstration, Let's say we are transitioning this patient from non-invasive to invasive ventilation, and we want to do it as fast as possible. We will touch Standby, disconnect the patient, and then touch Enter Ventilator Configuration.